Hello out there in YouTube land. After a long break, Dr. Reeves is back with another video. Today's video is about a medicine, Depakote, sodium valproate, valproic acid, Depakine. goes by different names. In the United States, it's marketed as Depakote DR and Depakote ER in terms of the pills that we usually use. And I'm going to talk about the difference between those two versions towards the end of the video. So, like all medicines that are used for various things, um, your mileage may vary. Yes, some people do great, some people think it's terrible and poison and should be taken off the market. Most people are somewhere in the middle. That's normal for most medicines. Depakote's used, started life really as a, as a seizure medication and it's used for epilepsy. It's been found to be pretty helpful in reducing migraine frequency and it's also commonly used in helping regulate some mood disorders, particularly uh, bipolar uh, disease. So I'm going to kind of talk about the, the, I've already talked about the uses. I'm going to talk about kind of common side effects, some uncommon side effects, um, talk about uh, birth defects, uh, drug levels, and then the difference in the, in the couple of uh, kinds of pills that there are. I'm going to try to go through things a little bit quickly because you have a rewind button, which I wish my life had sometimes, but so it goes. So. Uh, the medicine, the common side effects, so remember it's a seizure medication and all seizure medications have what I call the drunk, tired, and stupid set of side effects. And meaning if you take enough, you'll have this, you'll be uh, out of it, balance is off, uh, can't process thinking well. True of all seizure medications and pretty much every drug that somehow affects the brain. Um, no, Depakote's not better or worse than most of them. Uh, in fact, it's better than some. And, uh, but, but everybody's different. You know, some people have uh, terrible sedation at, at low levels and other people uh, take a high level and they're uh, perky and alert. The, uh, and that's true of all the seizure medicines. More specific to Depakote is what I call the fat, bald, and shaky. Those are really common side effects. So unfortunately, it can, doesn't always, but can lead to weight gain. Um, it can lead to thinning of the hair, kind of losing some more hair on the comb or the brush. No, you don't wind up looking like Dr. Reeves, but that can be distressing, particularly for, for uh, women, but sometimes men too. And then the shaky is, uh, it tends to lead to a very fine, irregular uh, tremor uh, that's, that comes out when um, kind of slow pincer movements, um, static postures where you're just holding your hands out. It's not so much a, typically a, a rest tremor, when your hands are truly at rest or something like that. Um, stomach upset and loose stools, not that, not that uh, rare. Um, about a quarter of people may have an increase in the blood levels of ammonia, uh, which is a sort of a byproduct of some liver metabolism. In the vast majority of cases, this doesn't lead to any symptoms and it's not a sign of liver failure or something like that. But uh, it can be detected uh, on lab testing. And I have had uh, a few patients over the years where the ammonia buildup was actually fairly high to the point that it really did have an impact on their, their thinking and a level of alertness and such. And we just uh, had either had to change to a different medication or we have to add something else to try to keep the ammonia down. Um, a, a small reduction in the platelets in the blood uh, which is what helps blood clot, uh, can be seen. Typically, that doesn't really lead to any actual bleeding issues or lots of bruising or something like that, but it can be noted on the lab tests. Um, so that's kind of the, the main common things that I think I see. Uh, uncommon things, which fortunately I don't see very much, um, pancreatitis, so inflammation of the pancreas, can occur, uh, which is, uh, can, can be pretty bad. And most frequently that's seen in, in younger children, usually in the first three, four, five months on the medication. It's rather less frequent in adults. Um, liver problems, again, much more common in children under, say, two, usually seen in the first few months uh, on the medication. So if you've been on it for six months or more, chances are, are pretty low. But these bad things do happen. Um, that's just the nature of, of, of medications. <clears throat> um, birth defects, that's an issue on the medicine. It has a higher rate of certain kinds of birth defects, particularly neural tube defects, 
which has to do with formation of sort of the spinal cord and the coverings over the spinal cord. Um, cleft lip or cleft palate. Some kinds of heart defects are increased. And so, you know, all things being equal, a, a younger woman of childbearing age, one might shy away from this, but that's all things being equal. They're often not all equal. You know, if you have somebody where uh, they're on a low dose of, of Depakote and, um, you know, she has bad seizures, uh, uh, like convulsions, and the Depakote keeps them completely away, maybe other medicines haven't, you know, you're kind of weighing the pros and cons. Definitely, uh, you would want to, to have the young woman on folic acid supplementation to try to reduce the neural tube defect risk. The uh, drug levels for Depakote, depending on the laboratory, that you use. You get ranges sort of in the 30, 40, 50, up to 100-ish in the United States. Um, but please remember that's the commonly useful range. It's not the normal range. There's no normal range because you don't normally take the stuff. I have patients who run around with levels of 20 or 25 and are seizure-free and doing great. Um, I have people who are running around at levels of 125 and are doing great. They're not having side effects. Um, so kind of your mileage may vary. As with most medications, seizures and otherwise, you're trying to get away with the lowest dose that you can get away with and do well. Now, there's Depakote DR and there's Depakote ER. And there's an IV form, which is one of the advantages actually of Depakote. We have a lot of medications uh, for seizures and such that you can't give by vein in case I don't know, you broke your leg and were in the hospital and and you couldn't take your medicines for a few days so that's that's an advantage but in the in terms of the pills it's confusing because there's Depakote delayed release DR and Depakote ER extended release they sound like they're the same thing and they're not um, and I wish they'd rename it but Depakote DR is that the release of the medicine is delayed, but when it is released, when the coating on the outside of the tablet dissolves, it's all released at once. And so you have that rise in the, the blood level relatively quickly. So I think of it in terms of like, uh, you know, I don't know, having a long fuse on the firework, you know, and it takes a long time for the thing to, to go off, but then when it shoots up, it shoots up just it's later. Whereas the Depakote ER is truly an extended release. It's a very slow release. Um, so you have much less of the up and down of the blood levels around the clock. I can probably count on one hand the number of patients that I intentionally use Depakote DR on because for the vast majority of patients that I take care of, having something you can take once a day, um, or sometimes they take it twice a day, but you take it once a day, uh, and you have really steady blood levels is fantastic. So that's a very quick Cook's tour of Depakote. Uh, I talked mostly about kind of epilepsy, but <clears throat> clearly can be used for migraines and mood regulation. And um, I hope this was helpful. Thanks.